The uh, air show over the weekend was, uh, by all accounts, phenomenal. Mr. Gilstrap literally had front row seats. When I say front row, you were telling me that when those dudes parachuted out of the planes, they landed how close to you? The Golden Knights, when they landed, were maybe 12, 15 feet away from me. It was, I mean, you could not be more dead center than where we were. It was great. We, we, we bought the tickets for the Friends of the Air show, which, mm-hmm. by the way, they're, they're a little on the pricey side, but you get the good seats, you have available she- shade, you have a lot of drinks, and it's a free lunch. Well, free lunch. It's a paid-for lunch. But um, it was, not only was it a great show, but the weather could not have been nicer. There was a, it was hot, but there was a great breeze that came through. Um, and again, we were sitting on grass, not on the tarmac. But um, everything about that show I thought was terrific. Our guest on the program at the moment is uh, Nick Deal. And, uh, good morning. N- Nick, good morning to you. I'm kind of a big deal. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> you're, you're, you're quite welcome. Uh, John, you went to the Saturday show. Did you go to the Sunday one as well? No, I okay, did not. Saturday show. So, uh, Nick, the aftermath of the first air show since, what, 2008 or nine? Uh, what's your report? Yep. Uh, I'm completely exhausted. But, uh, <laughs> that's why you're on the phone. <laughs> that's right. No, it, it, it was. I think it was a great show. Um, as this is the first show we've done on the civilian side of the field since 2008. It's the first show at the airport since 2012. Um, it, it was truly a community event. Um, everybody pitched in to to make sure this this was successful. I mean, quite literally, from the, the, the governor's office to the lieutenant governor's office to the Berkeley County Commission. The, uh, you had Gary Wine on uh, earlier this morning, mm-hmm. and his lovely wife was one of our greatest volunteers in helping out with the show this year. She was awesome. And uh, we, uh, we, we, everybody was so, so supportive of the event. Um, and I could I could tell you a hundred stories of people that went way out of their way to make sure that this was gonna this was gonna go. Um, as with any show, we had some little snafus, but they were all administrative, and the show itself was perfect. Um, there, uh, we we got some good feedback on the event, on the static aircraft we had, on the aircraft we had flying, and um, we brought in people we think from 13 different states uh, based on license plates we saw, and um, it, it, it was a nice event. Very nice, uh, John. Uh, seeing what you saw on Saturday, uh, what type of improvements or suggestions would you offer in regards to crowd control, uh, placement of activities, movement of the shows? Um, the only thing I could think of, and it, 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 more golf carts to take people. It's a it's a long walk down the the tarmac from the the. Yeah. There, there are shuttle buses that take you to the far end of the of the runway, and but it, it's a long walk. But the long walk also takes you past the the static displays. You know, one of the things that I found entertaining um, was you know the AC one thirty, which is a it's a gunship. It's a spectacular weapon. Um, Puff the magic dragon. Y- yes, exactly. And um, when it landed, and it, then it became a, a static display, and they're coming through. I was watching those young airmen, literally hanging out the windows, and there's a hatch on the top. Those guys were grinning from ear to ear and waving. So I, I think they got a real kick out of being there. And then watching yeah. them interact with the crowd, the Golden Knights, the parachute guys, when uh, fist bumping and high fiving, and you know, giving out stickers to kids and all of that. I, I just really was impressed by every element of the show. I don't really have a criticism. And God helped out a lot with some pretty good weather. Uh, It was uh, perfect weather. I'll explain a little bit about that term, Puff the Magic Dragon. Uh, In in Vietnam, uh, 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 that's when they first used that gunship. And it flies around, and it's got, uh, uh, I think it was like uh, three uh, 30 caliber rapid fire uh, 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 machine guns, actually, actually uh, uh, small cannons, they call them, third at rapid fire cannons. And you, about every fourth bullet was what's called a tracer round, which lights up. And the effect was when this thing was flying around, then they all fired out the same side of the plane, would be flying around in a circle over the target, and it was like this stream of fire coming out of this airplane down to the target. 
And this was at the time that the folk group Peter, Paul, and Mary had a very popular song, children's song, called Puff the Magic Dragon. Mm-hmm. And and the guys on the ground, the, the, the infantry guys, we, we'd look up and it just looked like a dragon, you know, breathing fire. So that's where the name came from. Interesting. Wow. I did not know that. Huh. Yeah, good stuff. Hey, uh, so Nick, do you have an estimate on the numbers for the attendance over the weekend? Uh, we think we had about 17,000 on Saturday. We think our numbers were a little lower on Sunday. It's interesting. We we, we uh, had the same amount of tickets uh, sold on Saturday, or very close to the same amount of tickets on Saturday versus Sunday. But um, we we discovered on Sunday after the show that uh, when I talked to the uh, state police and the and the uh, sheriff's department, who also were big supporters of this event, they said really the only uh, the only issues they had outside the fence were. Uh, all of the local folks that found out that some of our parking lots had, were a great viewing point. <laughs> so, <laughs> there were hundreds of people. In the, there were hundreds of people in our parking lot, and uh, so they, that might have been the issue on Sunday. But uh, it was uh, that's that's what we're thinking. Did you make enough to cover the show expenses? We did. We made enough to cover the show expenses, and we think that we made enough. Well, our, our goal was always to uh, take whatever we had whatever revenue we generated from this over and above our costs to put it into phase two of the MRB Foundation's um, outdoor aviation education facility, which is on the knoll just above the terminal. And we already have a, uh, a, a uh, piece of equipment up there that's a, um, it might look like a playground, but it teaches kids about, um, about aviation while they're while they're climbing around on it. So that's going to be open, and we're going to be doing a ribbon cutting for that very shortly. And um, our uh, phase two of that is to um, renovate a, uh, a, a building, we have block building that we have up there to make it a little more user friendly. And uh, we're hoping, and uh, we got some, we uh, got an, a contribution not for the air show, but a contribution specifically from the First Energy Foundation to help with that. Plus, the funds that we have uh, from the um, from the air show, we're going to be able to use to at least put a, a we're hoping a sizable uh, dent in our uh, fundraising requirements for our outdoor pavilion that would go right there beside it. Are you able to state how much you were able to generate from the shows? We don't know yet. We're still paying bills, and we will be for about a week. Um, I, I would guesstimate somewhere in the neighborhood of, of forty or fifty thousand dollars though as a net i and I, that's a total guess <laughs> yes but a, as a net total mm-hmm. guess um, do we expect this to be an so, annual event no we don't expect it to be an a i know that some people would like to to uh to have this every year i don't i and i've always i've always said even from oh five when we did our first show i just don't think that the community itself um can handle an every year event these are very expensive and it's heavily dependent on on community support and uh i i don't have an objection with working on an every other year event or at least something in a couple of years if the stars align but um when we did this we really did it as a one-time show uh to celebrate the 100th birthday of the of the airport authority and of shepherd field our, um, our our historian uh, Bart Rogers, who many of you know, um, was uh, you know reminded me when I started here a little over four years ago that we had a hundred year birthday coming up, and he wanted to do a big celebration. And so uh, that, in culmination with the uh, with the county back then the county council, now the county commission, um, we were able to to put this together, and um, we. Uh, you know, we would certainly. We're not. I'm not taking it off the table. We'd certainly consider it. But um, I'm at least two days after the show, when I've had a grand total of about three hours of sleep a night for several days, I'm not looking forward to a uh, to an every year show. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, you keep that kind of schedule. I'm going to hire you to work beside me in the mornings. <laughs> we we can both get three hours of sleep. There you go. <laughs> Combine that six hours. That's, that's almost good. So for what it's worth, I think spacing it out three or four years, it, it does build anticipation. I think it's a, you know, you don't, you don't want to 
Plus, there's new equipment, right? There, there'd be new technology right. as it comes out. Now, if I could throw in one thing, what does it take to get permission to do a supersonic flyby, to, to get a sonic boom? Is that even possible I, these days? I don't think it's possible anymore. I might be wrong. Uh, somebody that's, that, that has more of an aviation background than, than me is probably the person to ask, but I don't think you can do that anymore. Although some of these folks were pretty close when they were flying here. The, F, the F-22, the, I've never seen one of those in in person that's that is absolutely just awesome yeah some of his flight surfaces were creating a lot of uh uh condensation when he when was moving around plus the hundred and fifty thousand gallons of fuel that he used on afterburner coming through yep <laughs> that's amazing yeah i do think uh trying to have it every year uh, would end up with a public kind of you know, lots of, well, I'm not going to go this year. I can go next year, that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And the crowds would right. diminish, I think, uh, considerably. Right, right. Nick, what kind of feedback did you get from the folks who brought their aircraft and from those who performed during the air show? The feedback we got from them was overwhelmingly positive. They, uh, they said that the crowd was very engaged. Um, they were very appreciative of how um, how kind – our line guys were when they brought them in to the fact that our our uh, our board president actually came over and said hello to everybody and made sure they had everything they needed and our vice chair of the board larry dunn um worked almost as hard well he probably worked worked harder than i did frankly because he was out in the mix of this um directing uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the activity on the field and and he was a real lifesaver in this as well he did he he really really stepped up and and helped us out at a time where we needed it trying to to get some of these military uh things uh organized and so i sincerely appreciated his support too but they were all very uh very appreciative of the um of the welcome they got and of uh of the community as a whole and some of them told me stories about going out to the community either going to the gym or going out to eat and people recognizing them and, and giving them accolades for the for the performance or even their practice day so cool. it was very nice in his speech at the, at the beginning De governor justice mentioned that baby dog had to get out of the sun because she gets overheated um did they stick around <laughs> for the whole show <laughs> No, they left uh, shortly after. Shortly after that, they um, he had uh, he had another um, another appointment, and so they took off uh, just before the Golden Knights uh, did another jump. I think. Is it really baby dog that gets overheated? That's what he said. <laughs> okay, I take the man at his word. Nick, at what point along the way did you know the governor was uh, going to be showing up in the morning on Saturday for a couple hours? Uh, we found out a few a few days prior. And we're, we were very excited that he was coming, and then we were uh, – logistically, we had to work that out because even though – I mean, as we speak, I, I'm looking at the 167th airlift wing, and uh, they're they're relatively close on the field here. They're right across the runway. Logistically, to get from here to there is not as simple as you think it is, and especially when you have the governor um, – and, and in his entourage that needed to – they went, he wanted to go visit the 167th, which I thought was great. Um, and then he wanted to come over here and check out a C7, uh, the C-17 and some of the other aircraft and then talk to some of the crowd here. And so logistically, we really had to figure out exactly how that was going to work. So it was um, – that, that took some time to, to do, but we were grateful that – we were grateful that he came and uh, grateful for the support of, of the state uh, – in uh, in bringing this to the community, it is a it's a real. Um, not only is it is it a good event for us, but I've always said it's a good community event in bringing people that have never been to our great state to West Virginia. And if this is the first exposure to they have that they have to West Virginia, hopefully it's a positive, lasting one and brings them back over and over again. I got uh, a text from my friend Kathy. It was a question and a comment. The comment is that, yes, bulldogs do get overheated, so don't laugh at bulldogs getting overheated. That's not kind. And two, <laughs> and, and two is the question, can you bring the Blue Angels in for the next air show that you do? Well, we, have, uh, we actually have asked the Blue Angels repeatedly to come to our field since, since 2005. And uh, up to now, they have said uh, thank you, but no thank you. They have shows that they do that are within a couple hours' drive of here, 
and they felt like it might be overkill. But um, you know, we we keep asking. So I think they uh, did we'll, a show in the '90s in uh, at the airport, if I remember. Uh, Nick was, either... was it the? Yeah, the, no, I know there was a show in '93. '93. I don't know um, who, and it was a one day show, mm -hmm. and that's really. Some folks that have been at the airport longer than me will remember that. I, I moved here in o, in 04, actually in December of 04. And so I don't know um, I don't know exactly who was involved with that show. I thought it was the Thunderbirds, but it might have been the Blue Angels. might have been the Thunderbirds. I was going to say, what's the other famous flying group? Cause the Air Force is the Thunderbirds, yeah. the Blue Angels, or the Navy. Yeah, It was one of the two because I remember being there. And uh, we were doing a remote broadcast from there at the time, and they were doing the show. And it was pretty phenomenal. Uh, actually, when you see those uh, jets up close and what they do, it's humbling. Yeah. Uh, oh, incidentally, in, in response to your friend Kathy, uh, I did not make fun of any dog. <laughs> I would never make yes. fun of a dog. You were, you were giggling and chuckling at the governor as the one who was being over here. I merely asked a question. <laughs> yes. And I'll tell you, there was something very impressive. Again, we had outstanding seats and i was looking across at the hangar across the, the other side of the airport and i saw a lot of flashing lights and sort of movement around there and it, it sort of drew my attention uh, my inner author was obviously something was going on there was a golf cart motorcade that came across <laughs> the tarmac it had it, there was a cop in the front with with the lights flashing and then there were a series of golf carts and there was Governor Jim in his blue shirt, and the way he was sitting, I knew he was hanging on to Baby Dog, and of course he was. And there was a guy on his cart, I don't know if it was a security guy or what, but was riding on the back bumper of yep. the governor's oh, golf sure. cart. Yeah. It, it was just, it was, it's, I thought, you just don't see a lot of golf cart motorcades. No, but usually it, when you're involved in some type of motorcade like that or whatever, Joy is usually up front. <laughs> Picking off all only, the all only on dog sleds. Only, that's only for dog sleds. Dog sleds. Okay, <laughs> yeah, John's wife Joy, <laughs> she acts as John's windshield whenever they're outdoors motoring around. Uh, uh, John Alderton, who uh, retired from the one sixty seventh, said that it was the Thunderbirds, and he knows this. This was his first major event as chief of security over at the one sixty seventh. So he does confirm it was the Thunderbirds. Yeah, and and clearly since it's the Air National Guard which is part of the Air Force, Yes, it would be much more logical for the Thunderbirds to come than the Blue Angels. Yeah, uh, Nick, what do you know now that you didn't know then in regards to putting on an air show that uh, you would incorporate into whenever the next one will be? Well, I mean, one of the, one of the things that we work pretty hard on this year is, um, is – is parking. We made sure that we had a, a plan in place for parking. I think we did a great job getting people out of here this year, but um, the parking, the parking areas, um, I would probably just block some of those off until we were ready to use them. Uh, just because we had um, some of these are areas that we typically don't let the general public into anyway, and. Um, so, and it's not that I, I, I don't really, I mean, when people come to watch an air show, sure, we want to sell tickets, but at the end of the day, our focus is to show people how exciting aviation is and to bring them to our airport to see all these amazing aircraft and to try to, of, and of the viewers, to try to get a few of them to say, hey, you know what, I think I'd like to have a career in aviation. That's our goal, is to bring more people into the field of aviation. And so... I don't begrudge somebody that watches the show from the parking lot, but you know there are some some safety issues and other things uh, and access issues that could be a problem when we're not manning areas. And so those are little tweaks that we have to do. And also we've got to you know we have to do a better job um, at uh, making sure that we've got uh, we clearly identify um, what where our, our statics are and what's here because we answered a lot of questions about, hey, where's this static or where's that static because we didn't put the list out ahead of time because it really came together until the last minute. Um, and so I think we could probably have a you know, do a better job at letting folks know where things are. Maria Lawrence in, on our Facebook comments section posted, the big thrill for her was having Skip Atkins fly by and cut the ribbon she was holding. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, scissors would have cost less, Nick. <laughs> yep. 
I don't know if that trick is as dangerous as it looked like, but honest to God, that, that plane couldn't have been more than three feet from them as they passed. Yeah, says the guy who I wasn't holding so. the ribbon, by yeah, the way. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. We brought Skip Stewart here back in 05 when he was – he was also much younger, and he was a lot less expensive back then. Um, <laughs> but he uh, did a he did as, as edgy a show back then as he did this time. It's it's pretty amazing to uh, to to watch how he flies anyway, and to come to come across the uh, the, the runway just a couple three feet above the ground. I, I don't know how he does it. I really don't. Nick, I appreciate you uh, extending yourself here. I know you're wiped from the weekend, so I, I do appreciate you coming on this morning and giving us uh, the report uh, in regards to the aftermath of the air show. And hopefully we'll get another one uh, in the next couple of years, too. I, I know the community enjoyed this one very much. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Well done. Thank you, Nick. And I'll, I'll send you out uh, with uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary, too. Here we go. John's favorite music. He's a big folk music guy over there. Uh, Nick Deal at uh, 9 o'clock here. John Hardy on deck.